We've discussed how prokaryotes sense their environment using transcription factors in chemotaxis sensory proteins. Eukaryotes similarly have sensor proteins that link environmental events to changes in transcription or other mechanisms of regulation. However, they employ evolutionarily unrelated proteins to do so that have different biochemical mechanisms. In the big picture, more happens at the post-translational level in eukaryotes than happens in prokaryotes. In prokaryotes, the integration of information tends to occur at the level of transcription initiation on complex promoters. It's transduced by signaling specific sensory proteins in transcription factors. In eukaryotes, the decision-making happens through crosstalk of protein-protein interactions, often via phosphorylation changes. Eukaryotic signal transduction gets extremely complicated. Understanding it is the primary focus of systems biology. Here you're looking at a G protein signaling in a GPCR system. The GPCR itself is a multi-pass integral membrane protein. It has ligand binding sites. When they bind their ligand, they activate a heterotrimeric G protein by release of its alpha subunit. These alpha subunits can go on to do all sorts of things in the cell. Sometimes they directly affect the activity of other proteins in the cell, while other alpha subunits enter the nucleus and alter gene expression. When talking about transcriptional control in prokaryotes, we spoke of things like two-component histidine kinases and pleiotropic transcription factors. In eukaryotes, there similarly are these repeated patterns of signal transduction that employ homologous proteins to detect and transduce disparate external signals, but it's different proteins. One major signal transduction route is the use of G-protein coupled receptors, or GPCRs, which are embedded in the cell membrane. They directly respond to external signals and transduce binding by hydrolysis of bound GTP. They are most popularly known for their role in olfaction, but they're involved in many sensory processes. The ligands for most GPCRs are not known, but there are many of them, and GPCRs are often drug targets in pharmaceutical discovery. Biochemically, the G proteins bind and hydrolyze GTP upon activation. There are two types of G proteins. Heterotrimeric G proteins are made up of alpha, beta, and gamma subunits and are the ones that work with the GPCRs. Small RAS superfamily GTPases are single subunit proteins, and they are the ones that show up in the tyrosine kinase or MAP kinase pathways. For RAS type G proteins, guanine nucleotide exchange factors, or GEFs, will exchange out GTP for new GTP molecules. For the heterotrimeric type G proteins, the GBCR is itself the GEF. The mode of communicating receptor activation results in dissociation of the alpha subunit. The alpha subunit eventually hydrolyzes the GDP and returns to the beta-gamma complex. Additionally, there are things called GTPase activating proteins, or GAPs, that can deactivate G proteins by inducing hydrolysis of the GTP. The other major class of signal transduction cascades are the MAP kinase cascades that typically initiate uh, from signals of a tyrosine kinase. Like the GPCRs, the tyrosine kinases are embedded in the cell membrane and are stimulated by external signals, often growth factors. In response, they phosphorylate tyrosine residues on proteins. Often this signal is transduced through RAS-style G proteins and relayed onto a MAP kinase cascade. Here, a relay of kinases transduces the original signal through phosphorylation of threonine or serine residues on other signaling proteins. Ultimately, they activate transcription factors. One thing to be aware of in reading literature about these proteins is that MAP kinase is not one specific protein. It refers to a homologous class of proteins that are functionally related but play disparate roles in the cell. Some specifically named MAP kinase proteins, such as ERK, are themselves also classes of proteins that may be encoded by multiple genes in the same genome, in addition to having multiple splice variants at the protein level. It is typical to have many such kinases all in one cell type, and there are extensive crosstalk between these different kinases. Due to the nonspecific nature of the tools used to study them, MAP kinase activity is often described in terms of a protein class without knowing exactly which protein or which splice variant is doing the reaction. Here's an example. 
The focal adhesion kinase is associated with the cytoskeleton and to anchoring proteins such as integrins. These proteins attach the cell with the extracellular matrix or to other cells. FACT senses changes to the cell's association with an external physical support. Signaling is transduced to the G proteins RAS and Rho, which interact with other G proteins including CDC42. These G proteins further stimulate several MAP kinase cascades, some of which result in changes in gene expression, while others directly affect the structure of the cytoskeleton. Many signal transduction cascades are coupled to the apoptosis machinery. The proteins associated with apoptosis are not under dynamic transcriptional control. The events that trigger this system are all post-translational reactions involving phosphorylation and proteolytic cleavage mechanisms. The major players are the caspases, which are cysteine proteases that cleave other proteins associated with apoptosis and ultimately destroy the cell. There are at least 11 caspases in humans. There is a cascade of activation where they activate each other by cleaving. Mitochondria play a major role as well. The release of cytochrome C to the cytoplasm is a major commitment step during apoptosis. As a result of apoptosis, everything in the cell gets efficiently degraded, including DNA fragmentation, breakdown of the nucleus, and inactivation of DNA repair enzymes. The cell is eventually reduced to multiple vacuoles that get consumed by macrophages in an animal. Apoptosis is very important in development, such as dividing your fingers from one another. They are also important in the immune system. Apoptosis is involved in processes such as eliminating self-reactive antibody-producing B cells. Apoptosis isn't just for animals. Plants do it too, and it's a common feature of development there as well. But keep in mind it's a very complicated process that is tied into many signal transduction cascades. The details of this diagram aren't important for our purposes of discussion, but don't be fooled into thinking this is a simple process.